600 participants for this webinar. Yes. Okay. Yeah. How much? 610. That's a joint. 610. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Very yes, good. Sir. Thank you, man. In a short period. Yes, sir. In two days. And short period of notification. Yes, sir. Only two days. Thank you. Officer Ghosh. Mm. Officer Mr. David Ghosh. Sir. Sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, join, sir. Okay. And Professor Devna Chaudhary also joined, sir. Principal. Good evening. Namaskar. I am Thakur. Sawai ke niye. Our family. Abong our hote college family. Biot family. Bhalo thakur. Itu ko yasa korai. Sister. Hey. So we are live now on YouTube. I think we should begin the session. Yes. Yes. A very good evening to one and all, all the dignitaries and participants present today. I would request our principal, ma'am, Dr. Joyce Srilaha, to start with the inaugural speech. Ma'am, over to you. Thank you, Mubirai. Uh, very good evening to everybody. I welcome all of you in this one day national level webinar on understanding the crucial role of nutrition in health promotion and disease prevention in observance of Rashtriya Poshan Ma 2020, organized by Department of Nutrition, UG and Department of Food Science and Nutrition, PG, in collaboration with Department of NSS and Department of NCC of Raja Enil Khan Women's College, autonomous, popularly known as Gop College. Being the chairperson of this webinar, I have the opportunity to introduce to you the legacy of the college and the departments. Raja Enil Khan Women's College was established with the blessings and initiative of the then Chief Minister of West Bengal, Dr. Bidhan Chandra Roy, in the historical mm -hmm. palace of Midnapur town in the year 1957. In the ending years, the college has registered significant growth in the areas of teaching and college has thrice from NAC accreditation, first in the year 2004, then 2011, and again in 2016. The college has also received Center with Potential for Excellence, CPE status in the year 2011, and received grant second time in the year 2017. College has also received these deepest grant twice. Presently, it offers 27 subjects at the undergraduate level and 11 subjects at the postgraduate level. In the year 2019, we have also received two research centers, one for natural and applied sciences and the other for humanities and social sciences. Presently, 3,500 students and 156 faculty members are there. 40 research scholars are pursuing their PhD program through our research center. About the department, 
i must say something department of nutrition has both ug and pg the pg section started its journey in the uh, name of food science and nutrition just in the last year according to me the department can play a crucial role on the health promotion and disease prevention of our students they must aware their friends about the food habits they should grow or the process to follow for the cooking cooking process they should follow actual cooking process so students of nutrition department have some responsibility for maintaining good health of the society in this pandemic situation who recommended healthy diet and immuno boosting food for improved immunity now i express my gratitude and gratefulness to all four speakers of today's webinar namely first speaker dr dilip kumar nondi our own veteran teacher who is associated with this department of nutrition from the day one i welcome him for his lecture on role of yoga and functional foods for health intervention in covid 19 pandemic situation next i welcome the second speaker dr devnath choudhury professor department of dietetics and nutrition nshm knowledge campus for his lecture now first thousand days crucial to this webinar professor choudhury i welcome the third speaker of this webinar professor devidas ghosh renowned professor of department of biomedical laboratory science and management vidyasagar university for the lecture on immuno boosting nutrient and herd immunity double showed up covid 19 welcome you sir being a fan die hard fan of your lecture finally i welcome dr shubal das assistant professor guru ghashidas vishwavidyalay chatisgarh for his lecture on vital role of nutrition in combating disease in pandemic situation now i should thank the department i am thankful to all the teachers of department of nutrition nss ncc especially ms padma sangu bomjan for her enthusiasm to organize this webinar i wish a great success of this webinar namaskar joy hind thank you for your blessings ma'am uh, and thank you for inaugurating this webinar this webinar would not have been possible without your constant support and guidance so i wish a very good evening to one and all present here respected madam dr jayashree laha the principal of raja narendra lal khan women's college and the speakers dr dilip kumar nandi associate professor in the department of physiology and head of the department of bmlt raja nl khan women's college then we have dr devna choudhury professor department of dietetics and nutrition nshm knowledge campus and ex professor and head of the department of biochemistry and nutrition all india institute of hygiene and public health kolkata and professor devidas ghosh the professor department of biomedical laboratory science and management vidyasagar university dr subal das assistant professor department of anthropology and tribal development guru ghashidas vishwavidyalaya chatisgarh and last but not the least i would i would like to heartily welcome all the participants who have registered for this webinar and who i hope will walk away a little bit wiser and more aware of the crucial role of nutrition in health promotion and disease prevention this webinar has been organized in observance of the rashtriya poshan maah 2020 i'd like to speak a little bit about this program in order to bring nutrition to the center stage of the national development agenda the government of india launched poshan abhiyan which is a multi ministerial convergence mission with a vision to address malnutrition in a targeted approach to ensure community mobilization and bolster people's participation every year the month of september is celebrated as rashtriya poshan maah across the country 
This event has been celebrated every year uh, with either intervention programs or awareness campaigns across institutions. Uh, but this year has been very different and very unique. And though we could not participate physically in this event this year, uh, we hope to continue to create nutritional awareness by any means, even during these uh, uncertain times. And we are truly honored to have such an uh, extraordinary panel of such eminent speakers who are highly revered mm -hmm. for their contributions in the field of nutrition mm -hmm. and allied sciences. We are certain that this session will be successful in propagating the health benefits mm -hmm. of proper mm -hmm. nutrition right from the beginning of life to the later stages, and especially during these times of such pandemics. So now I would like to request Ms. Madhurai Gupta to give a short introduction of Dr. Dilip Kumar Nandi oh, before necessary. he begins his speech. Yes, sir. Not necessary. Already, uh, already mentioned by uh, Dr. Our principal. Okay, sir. No, no need. Sir, then without much further ado, we'd like to start the session with your speech. Yes, sir. Yes, start now. Yes, sir. Good evening to everyone. At first, I would convey my cordial gratitude to everyone being there present in this national webinar on understanding the crucial role of nutrition in health promotion and disease prevention. Uh, in the observations of the Oshama 2000 2022. First of all, I am thankful and grateful to our respected principal, Madam Dr. Jasri Laha, and our uh, resource person, uh, Honorable Professor Devidas Gross, senior most professor of Vidyashagar University, not only Department of uh, Biomedical Laboratory Science and Management, but also the Clinical Nutrition and Management, and uh, he. Uh, he uh, he was the founder of uh, nutrition uh, MSc degree in Vidyashagar University since 2002. And another speaker, very resourceful speaker, of Professor Devna Choudhury, former senior professor, All India Institute of Hygiene and Public Health, Kolkata, and Dr. Subal Das, assistant professor, Guru Dashi Das Vishwavidyalaya uh, Chhattisgarh. I am also thankful to my dear conveners, Professor Padma Sangmu Bumjong, Assistant Professor and Head Department of Nutrition, Professor Devjani Mukherjee, Associate Professor, Department of English, Organizing Secretaries, Professor Nirmal Loshina, in charge of Nutrition NSS Department, NSS Program Officer, Professor Vishwanath Nag, Vishwanath. Now, Assistant Professor, Department of Political Science, Professor Sogen Soren, Assistant Professor, Department of Mathematics, Simothi Onima Singh, uh, SAC 2, Department of Physical Education, who had taken special initiative for carrying out today's webinar in collaboration with other departmental faculties of nutrition, namely Madurai Gupta, Onima Hatun. Megomakra Mondor, Savanti Pine, Devlina Giri. The topic and my dear students, the topics of this webinar is not only a big issue in the present scenario throughout the world, but also a big matter of our whole society. This nutrition, the <coughs> big issue in the present scenario, so the big matter of the society. The nutrition month has been observed in the month of March since 1973. And the theme of this year, 2020, was Eat Right, Bite by Bite. The month of September, particularly 1st to 7th September, is very much important of the whole nutrition community for observing as the nutrition week since 1982. Our government of India has been launched a program called the Maha since 2018. In the month of September each year, 
with the aim improve the nutritional outcomes for the children pregnant and lactant mothers the full form of the possum ma is the prime minister over <coughs> arching scheme for holistic nutrition under this scheme covers antenatal care optimal breastfeeding Right. Yes, sir, it is visible. It is. It is. Okay. This is the webinar organized by the nutrition department, nutrition department and department of food science and nutrition (PG) in collaboration with the NSS and NCC of Raja and with Narendra Lal Khan Women's College. Already mentioned our honorable principal. Who? Our uh, college uh, heritage building. This is the building where started our uh, first academic session in the year 1957. Our college is UGC affiliated under the Vidya Sagar University since 191985. But before that, affiliated to the University of Calcutta and re-accredited. Three times re-accredited. It is Vidhan Chandra Rai. Advocate for it. Then the uh, in in the just the uh, below the uh, Mahatma Gandhi and also.
doesn't have a net or what? Uh, I think there's a power failure in his place. Okay. Uh, so oh, he's trying okay. to join. I've talked with hmm. him. No, he should have gone then to the college. Yes, ma'am. I had asked him to go, but then uh, he decided to do it from home. Ma'am, yes, ma uh, I'll just call him and. Who doesn't have a net or what? Uh, I think. Uh, sir, I think we are live. DN, sir. Yes, yes. We can start now. Start. So we are live again. Live again? Okay, no problem. Yes, sir. No problem. Yes. Sorry for interactions. And uh, in the nutrition, our uh, another speaker, the resource person, Professor Devidas Gross, and Dr. Chaudhary will discuss much more. That's why I just few words uh, are presented in this uh, slide. Particularly, medicine cannot alone the cure the any disease without the food. The food science and uh, food science and its interactions with the living organisms and whole gamut to the promotions of growth and monitoring of our health. Nutrition is the fundamental health, the conventional nutrition, the conventional nutrition or the nutrients like uh, the macronutrient, micronutrient, so on. The functional foods, it is very much important nowadays and the nutraceutical and probiotics and the prebiotics. Fundamental, fundamental food and the fortified foods. The functional foods uh, are defined as it is not a new thing. Any food or any part of ingredients that may provide health benefits beyond the traditional nutrition that it's on. Japan was the first country to recognize the functional food as a separate category when in 1991 it introduced the POSU, the Food for Special Health Foods system to evaluate health. Then, after that, the European Food Foods, the functional food in science in Europe in the year of 1900. Then, the FASA, uh, the FASA is issued, rejected the notification. For the regulation and also the different dietary sources of the biomass. Mainly, I have mentioned here the functional food of nuts, very few in number, the nuts, seeds, and the oils, the bioactive compound is vitamin E, only the very rich in vitamin E, fish in omega 3 fatty acid. Legumes are the polyphenol, the anthocyanins and the cachetin, grapes and the red wine, the cyanides and also the flavonoids and the other. Compounds, citrus foods and the vegetable vitamin C and the others, the drug chocolate also the flavonoid, then the margarine is the phytosteroids and also the others plant products and sources, whole grains, the fibers and the phytochemicals, soya protein uh, uh, and, and a very important bioactive compound are the genistins and also the diazines, green leafy vegetables and the fruits, carotenes, carotenoids, uh, onion and the garlic, the curiositins and also the anisins and the others, the green and the black tea. The tea polyphenol, mainly the cachetins and the others, the fruits and vegetables, the chemicals, tomato, lycopene, and the vegetables, also the other uh, compounds are present. The probiotics, it is, it is a very last uh, uh, two decades, are very much important in the medical pharmaceutical of uh, is the uh, probiotics. It is the life or the leaf organisms which, when administered in adequates, the comfort a health benefits on the host. In our GI tract, the, the trillion of trillion of uh, uh, the probiotics are the living, uh, the bacteria or the microorganisms are present. Mainly in, in the probiotic, as a established probiotic uh, uh, of, of the species of the Lactobacillus, Bifitobacteria, is Saccharomyces, uh, Cerevis, Desia. Some E. coli and also the Bacillus species are also used as a probiotic. It is, it is assessed by different way or different 
uh, uh, laboratory technique for the establishment of the probiotic. The prebiotic is non uh, diglycer <laughs> digestible substances that provide a beneficial physiological effect of the host, uh, host selectively stimulated of the favorable growth of a number of uh, uh, indigenous bacteria. Commonly known, known probiotics are the prebiotics are oligofructose, inulin, galacto oligosaccharides, uh, uh, and <coughs> lactulose. And uh, the uh, functional foods are considered of the on the basis of the target organ or the system, the uh, gastrointestinal tract, the prebiotics, the soluble and also the insoluble fiber, probiotics, and the N3 fatty acids and micronutrients. Cardiovascular system, N3 fatty acids, the polyphenol, micronutrients, and soluble fibers, immunity systems, the uh, prebiotic, probiotic, nutrients, N3 fatty acid, polyphenol, and skeletal muscle, the fractals, is the mucopolysaccharide, kidney, also the fractals, or the kidney system. The nutraceutical, particularly uh, the functional food, when Japan has developed it, the functional food has developed the functional Are the self care during the COVID 19 pandemic by the uh, suggested or the uh, uh, given us by the Ministry of House? I do not go through details. The Holdi and other Zira like that, I do not go through details. The association reduce the uh, severity of the stress and the psychological experience on so many things in the social support is very much important nowadays. Uh, you know, we know all of our uh, ever in our society, not except uh, uh, particularly the neighboring uh, uh, um, the uh, family or the persons. Uh, uh, now I have uh, concluded with my uh, particular our research team members since uh, uh, 2009. The uh, before 2009, I am associates with my guide, Professor Devidas Ghos in uh, before 2009 along with performing research guide and also the guide of uh, in the performing the project different project from since uh, 1991 and after that in we have developed in our uh, college the dr kosik das a present the atas in uh, Belda college as a assistant professor the doctor uh, sees uh, uh, performing his phd uh, from uh, Vidyasagar University in uh, in the field of uh, probiotic, the doctor uh, Orpita Mondol, uh, he's assistant professor at Asutosh College, and also the Orpita Das Mahapatro, he's a, he's a uh, faculty member of uh, our, our microbiology department. She is Dr. Uh, Sreya Mondol, he uh, took his PhD both of the uh, uh, from and also the uh, Dr. Saboni Prasan from the Jadavpur University and uh, Dr. Suchismita Rai, the associate professor, both in uh, Dr. Saboni Prasan and Suchismita Rai, in attached as the associate professor in Minnapur City College. Then Dr. Mahosin Mondol and Dr. Pathapati Mukherjee and uh, Dr. Hibendu uh, 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 <coughs> Dotto. They took his PhD from the Sri Sotto Sai Medical uh, um, uh, Health Science and Technology. The Onimes uh, uh, submitted his PhD, and the Borsa, Dr. Borsa De Das Sarma, 
took his phd from the jadav uh, calcutta university and uh, the soman uh, and uh, mosumi particularly soman uh, pal uh, the uh, to be submitted his thesis from vidyasagar university his research field is nano uh, herbal nanoparticle and the soumi dr soumi chakraborty took his phd from the jadavpur university and uh, the halima khatun will be submitted the phd thesis in jadavpur university and she is also a, a, a research fellow and molana uh, ugc minority research So thank you so much sir for the very informative session now i would like to move on to our next speaker for the evening we are very fortunate to have with us dr devna choudhury he is the former professor and head department of biochemistry and nutrition All India Institute of Nutrition uh, Hygiene uh, and Public Health. Field Nutrition. of research in herbal. Some technical glitches happening. Sorry for the interruption. He is presently the adjunct faculty at NSHM Knowledge Campus. He has done his MSc and PhD in biochemistry from Calcutta University. Okay, okay. His recent research interests. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank uh, you, sir. Stay, stay safe and. the stay healthy in my last line particularly when you stay in the home or stay uh, stay anywhere but uh, you follow the uh, the performance the indoor play and uh, the relaxation of the ex exercise just yoga and meditation meditation it is very much important and aerobic exercise so many types of aerobic exercise uh, you will uh, cope up in your house the, the as a player the uh, as a player of different types uh, of the indoor and outdoor games creative activity so many creative activity drawing uh, uh, and uh, painting and positive thinking always be positive and think also be positive the installations of the home particularly uh, and reading of books the music and online uh, learning uh, courses and take control of yourself and illness before uh, take control of your self illness before it takes control of you thank you everybody for thank your, you so much uh, sir patience sorry for thank uh, you. maximum time taken time no 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 sir sorry. thank you so much thank, thank you. you that was a very informative uh, sorry. session thank you sorry uh, professor devnath and professor ghos no at all it's fine thank dr nandi thank you sir thank you thank you sir now we'll move on to our next speaker for the evening as i was introducing him uh, mm -hmm. that is none other than dr devna choudhury uh, his recent research interests are metabolic syndrome geriatric nutrition pediatric nutrition and vitamin d he has over 62 research publications in peer reviewed journals and books beside many popular articles he has supervised six phd scholars He has been the former editor in chief journal of Indian Dietetic Association. He is the fellow of the Indian Public Health Association and International College of Nutrition and life member of several professional okay. and academic organizations. He has been the former eminent panelist in the National Scientific Advisory Board of Nestle Nutrition Institute. He is the recipient of Rastogi Felicitation Award. of international college of nutrition for significant contribution in nutrition in the year 2004 i would now request sir to begin his session on the importance of first 1000 days and why is it crucial for optimal health over to you sir thank you for kind words uh, my slide is visible and i am audible yes sir yes sir it is visible and you are very much audible at the outset i like to thank the organizers for giving an opportunity to speak on the very last day of national nutrition month 
on one of the uh, topics suggested by government of india uh, for webinars the other one is a uh, sam children severely acute malnutrition children which is related to this topic thank you very much let us see the uh, trends of nutritional status of indian children to understand the importance of poshan abhiyan national nutrition month from national nutrition week all these we need an introspection we uh, need to see what has happened in the last few years if you uh, see the condition of under five children these are the parameters i am not explaining no time as many of uh, all practically are nutrition students uh, they must be knowing it the stunting which actually indicates a chronic malnutrition nfhs stands for national family health survey and uh, i'm just comparing these two reports 2005 6 and 2015 16 and there will be a betterment of stunting in the 10 year time underweight which uh, indicates a quick uh situation of the children whether they are properly fed or not growing properly or not or the present situation the current situation there is a improvement because there is a drop of stunting and underweight but what is alarming that wasting and even the severely wasting severe wasting has increased in this 10 year time and severely wasting means these are the sam children and uh, that is of great concern so you understand why government has focused on under nutrition generally and specifically on severely acute malnutrition that was a india picture and what is the scenario in west bengal same comparison of nfhs 3 and nfhs 4 and when there is a drop of underweight and stunting there is an increase of wasting and also severe wasting in the in our state now another very important indicator of nutritional status is anemia and if you see the condition of the same group of indian children below 5 years of age in nfhs 3 it was 68.9% there is an improvement of course but still it is more than 50% almost 60% of our children are having some kind of anemia mild moderate or severe condition of west bengal there is an improvement but still it is more than 50% more than 50% of children of this state according to nfhs 4 is having anemia now if we uh, just uh, go through the gestational periods i'm not describing this but after conception there will be fertilization there will be implantation embryo form and then the gestational period will start different organs will start growing i have the privilege of uh, observing these organs because uh, during my phd days i worked on human fetal brain and placenta so uh, particularly i have seen how the brain developed during the gestational period so brain is a very important organ which is actually focused during this period and the reason is this 
The most rapid period of brain growth is in the last trimester of pregnancy, that means seven to nine months of pregnancy, and the first two years of life. All other organs are also growing during gestational period, but brain growth almost completes within two years, and maybe after that, some changes, modifications, all these are going on. Thus, this time of period harbors the greatest opportunity to provide optimal nutrition to ensure normal development and also the time of greatest brain vulnerability to any nutrient deficit. A very crucial time and uh, sufficient nutrition is absolutely necessary uh, for the mother during the gestational period and after the birth for the infant and the young child. Special importance has been given to certain nutrients, no doubt, but overall nutrition is important. Now, what is first thousand days? Now we understand that in the gestational period, that is a nine month of time, that is 270 days in utero. That is 270 days in utero nine months into 30 days. And first two years means 365 into two, making a total of first thousand days. So from the uh, gestational period of nine months till two years of age is crucial for the child for all kinds of development. And if it is not taken care properly, that will have a great impact in the advanced age. Most importantly, maximum brain growth occurs. So malnutrition in this critical period can lead to stunting and suboptimal development outcome. Chronic malnutrition in utero or early childhood may cause to stunting or a failure of thrive, as I said, measured by height for age, and this irreversible condition negatively impacts brain function, IQ, and the immune system. Stunting, interestingly, is also associated with a greater risk of diabetes, cancer, or other diseases. So this is a very important issue. I will take up briefly at the end of my presentation. Low birth weight, you know that the uh, Birth weight of the child should be 2.5 kg or maybe more than that, but not very high. But it should be 2.5 kg. Anything less than that uh, means uh, it's a low birth weight. 15 to 20 percent of all births worldwide are LBW. The goal is to achieve a 30 percent reduction in LBW infants by 2025. It is associated with a range of both short and long term consequences. And what is important that good nutrition in the first thousand days of a child sets the foundation for all the days follow. This is according to WHO. Now, so proper pregnancy is important. I'm not going to describe in detail, no need, but proper planning of pregnancy underage pregnancies, not desirable, healthy food choice during pregnancy, physical activity, iron folic acid supplementation for 100 days should be taken, protection from toxic substances and infection, proper vaccination, avoidance of tobacco, alcohol or drugs, I mean, narcotic drugs, not medicine, maintenance of emotional health, stress, anxiety, whatever it may be. Now, the optimal and appropriate IYCF, that is the infant and young child feeding practices and strategies, according to Indian Academic of Pediatrics, exclusive breastfeeding should be practiced till end of the sixth infant months, 
After completion of six months, complementary phasing should be started. It should not be delayed. Uh, it should not be done maybe after eight months. No, because there will be a risk of undernutrition for the child. So early complementary feeding is not recommended, not even the late one. Breastfeeding should be continued along with the complementary feeding for at least two years, if possible. Mother should communicate, look into the eyes, touch and caress the body while feeding. And WHO growth charts recommended for the monitoring of the growth. This is the uh, WHO growth chart. This is, uh, is a length or height for age for the measurement or determination of stunting. This is weight for age for boys. That was the girls. Naturally, uh, for boys, growth chart is also available. This is a weight for age by which we can understand whether the child is underweight or not. A similar growth chart is available for the girls. And this is extremely important, is weight for length for girls. Boys chart is also available. And by this, we'll be able to know whether the child is wasted or not. And I'm talking about severely acute malnutrition. Now, what is desirable for all these charts and uh, uh, with a little bit of difference that ideally the child's body weight according to the length should be within minus 1 SD and plant plus 1 SD standard deviation of median. Those who have not done statistics, difficult to understand, Simply remember that their weight according to length or height should be within these two orange color lines, ideally. But if it drops, that means there is a wasting, which may be mild wasting, then moderate wasting. And if it goes below the black line, that is a severe wasting. So if you find that a child's body weight according to the length is something like here. So you can clearly say the child is suffering from severe wasting. That means the child is severely acute malnutrition child, SAM children. So I have already shown you the data of the stunting, wasting and underweight. Now, let us see the trend of child feeding practices in India. What are the indicators? Children under three years breastfed within one hour of birth, which is being actually recommended. There is a great increase in 10 years time, 2005, 6 to 2015 and 16, but still not up to the mark. Needs improvement. Children under six months exclusively breastfed increased, but just above 50%. But what is interesting, the children six to eight months receiving solid or semi-solid food according to the breast milk reduced. So they are not getting solid or semi-solid food, maybe only getting breast milk. I have myself... Uh, uh, seen one case in uh, our study area uh, in uh, Singul, in a remote village of Singul, that a lady feeding the child uh, breast milk exclusively when the age of the child is uh, eight months. This is not at all desirable. If you see the picture of West Bengal, the breastfeed within one hour increased. Receiving solid or semi-solid food with breast milk increased, but exclusive breastfeeding decreased in West Bengal. Exclusive breastfeeding decreased, but other two parameters increased. This is not desirable. Now, what is the child feeding practices? No data has been uh, collected in NFHS 3. 
But C, breastfed children, 6 to 23 months, below 2 years, receiving adequate diet, complementary feeding, 8.7%. Can you believe? Non-breastfed children, same group, less than 2 years, receiving adequate diet, only 14.3%. And the total children, less than 10%, less than 10% of Indian children in 2015-16 have to rely the data not receiving adequate diet. Alarming. Condition of West Bengal much better than Indian picture, but still uh, far from desirable. Breastfeeding practices of under two children, India, uh, Indian children, decline with the advancement of age. From the previous data, I think it is quite understandable. Breastfeeding with consuming complementary food expectedly increased, and not breastfeeding also uh, increased with the advancement of age. So. Uh, we get an idea of the trend of nutritional status of the children of India and West Bengal on the basis of certain indicators and parameters, etc. Now, this person is uh, Barker, David Barker, made a wonderful hypothesis. Perhaps the single most important observation made in the 20th century related to the origins of complex adult onset disorders was made by Barker and his colleagues. The pictures are of Barker actually, of different age. He is no more with us. In 2013, he left. But his hypothesis remained modified by himself and by some other people. I'm not describing detail, just in three, four slides, I will try to make the thing clear. The hypothesis is fetal origins of adult disease. What he said, a direct link between prenatal nutrition and late onset coronary heart disease. That was his first hypothesis in 1986. Why? Fetuses learn to adapt to the environment they expect to enter into once outside of the womb. If the fetus is not getting sufficient of nutrient, so the fetus will adapt itself for the environment because the fetus does not know what is waiting for him or her after he or she comes out from the womb. So adaptation occur, and that is the learning of the fetus. Because all transmissions entering the placenta act as postcards giving the fetus clues as to the outside world, preparing its physiological appropriate, physiology appropriately. That is the only connection. And that is with the mother, through the umbilical cord, and then placenta, and the Fetus is getting all the nutrients in the amniotic fluid. So fetus knows that this is waiting for me and I have to adapt, adapt in this situation. Now what happens when fetal conditions of scarcity do not match the world of birth and the child has been physiologically predisposed to inhabit an environment where expected resources are drastically different from reality, the mechanism becomes harmful because child is adapted to manage the situation with little bit of nutrient, etc. And by chance, if the child gets nutrient in plenty, so cannot adapt to that, that situation and that might lead to some unpleasant situation ultimately leading to coronary heart disease, what he said in 1986. But later on, he and in his book in 2001, after 15 years, he has given or rather modified his hypothesis 
in the thrifty phenotype hypothesis, popularly known as thrifty phenotype hypothesis. And literally thrifty means resource management, you can say, that with little bit of thing, how I, we can manage to survive. Even in the pandemic condition, if there is a scarcity, price rise, how to manage with the less potato, less onion, all these things. This is a thrifty phenomenon. Almost same thing here said, low availability of nutrients during the prenatal stage followed by an improvement in nutrition availability in early childhood causes an increased risk of metabolic disorders, including type 2 diabetes. This predominantly affects poor communities where metal and malnutrition may be rampant, in turn causing fetuses to be biologically programmed to expect sparse nutritional environments. What a peculiar situation. In the countries like us, ours, and some other poor countries, underdeveloped countries, developing countries, when there's a number of LBW children, they're at risk of developing so-called uh, affluent people's disease, like coronary heart disease and type 2 diabetes, at the later stage. Now, what government has done? Government has taken a lot of initiatives to provide food, to provide nutrients. After the independence, they have launched several micronutrient programs. All they have done, all, all these things. But these are the four very important programs focused particularly for the children and other vulnerable groups. The first one, you know, ICDS, Integrated Child Development Scheme, National Nutrition Policy 1993, Midday Meal Scheme for School Children, and National Food Security Act 2013 to provide subsidized food grains to the needy people, particularly BPL families. But the prevalence of stunting, wasting, and underweight remains high. How it was realized? The data I have given was 2015-16 published. But after that, the latest review, a short of a, not exactly meta-analysis, but a compilation of lot of data, and you cannot imagine how many contributors and associates are there. More than 60, 70 people, organizations, including ICMR, I mean NIN, and other ministries, other departments, all involved in developing this huge document, which has been published in 2019 in Lancet Child Adolescent Health. This is the burden of child and maternal and malnutrition and trends in its indicators in the states of India, the global burden of disease study, 1990 to 2017. What they did? Analyze the disease burden attributable to child and maternal and malnutrition and the trends in the malnutrition indicators from 1990 to 2017 in every state of India using all accessible data from multiple sources as part of global burden of diseases, injuries, and risk factors study. What was the finding? The stunting, underweight, and wasting prevalence reduced significantly in every state of India during 2010 to 2017. But this decrease was less than the annualized reduction needed to achieve the National Nutrition Month 2022 target. According to this report, low birth weight child in India was 21.4%, anemia 59.7% among less than five years children, 
exclusive breastfeeding 53.3 percent and at the same time overweight children 11.5 percent not negligible so we are having a coexistence of undernutrition and overnutrition particularly in the urban area sometimes even some rural areas and in some pockets particularly in the country that is growing and uh, with the changing lifestyle definitely there is a possibility of increase of overweight and obesity among our children malnutrition was the predominant risk factor for death in children younger than 5 years of age in every state of india in 2017 although the relative contribution of child and maternal malnutrition to total to total dailies which is a the short form of disability adjusted life years across all ages has declined in india from 36.5% in 1990 to 17.3% in 2017 it is still the leading risk factor for health loss i'm just uh, uh, giving the definition or meaning of uh, daily we may not be known to everybody daily is basically a measure of overall disease burden expressed as the number of years lost due to ill health disability or early death and there is a procedure there is a formula by which daily can be calculated and there is no need to describe here about daily but what is important the disease burden overall disease burden though reduced but still a leading risk factor for health loss i'm talking about malnutrition while all cause of under 5 death rate in india decreased from 2336 per 1 lakh in 1990 to 801 in 2017 the proportion of under 5 deaths attributable to malnutrition changed only modestly from 70.4% to 68.2% proportion of under 5 deaths attributable to malnutrition 68.2% in 2017 unbelievable this is the disability adjusted life years rate attributable to malnutrition in children younger than 5 years of age in the states of india 2017 you are from the color you are getting an idea of which uh, countries are which states are having serious problem like rajasthan uttar pradesh bihar assam and then some other madhya pradesh orissa and then maybe jharkhand gujarat west bengal is in the next group much better than these states so uh, from these the uh, daily uh, i mean the disease burden attributable to malnutrition can be understood it can be said that the picture in west bengal is much better in that respect uh, in comparison to many other states of india according to this report so with this uh, i like to conclude by saying that he who has health has hope and who has hope has everything once again i like to thank the organizers and the participants for giving me the opportunity to speak on the very last day of national nutrition month and i hope that the ocean of vision or nutritional movement will not stop here and will continue throughout the year and as it was uh, said that at least up to 2022 by government of india thank you very much thank you so much sir that was a very important and very intriguing session now moving on to our next speaker we are very grateful to have with us Professor Dr. Devidash Ghosh. He 
he has over 30 years of experience in teaching and over 35 years of experience in research he is now the professor of department of biomedical laboratory science with clinical institution vidya sagar university vidna professor ghosh has completed 19 projects funded by ugc icmr dst dst government of west bengal icar ncrt t research board under the government of india and pharmaceutical industries sponsored projects he has also completed one international project under government of india and government of tunisia till now 33 students have obtained phd under his guidance and another 10 students are still working under him professor ghosh has also obtained a gold medal award from physiological society of india he is a bilateral fellow of government of india and government of tunisia for the past 3 years he has two indian patents on nutraceuticals till now he has published over 165 papers in international journals and over 28 papers in national journals he is the editorial board member of several international and national journals he has published five chapters in edited books he is also the fellow of west bengal academy of science and technology professor ghosh is also a member of several phc of government agencies he also he is also the coordinator of two innovative programs under ugc his special fields of research interest are nutrigenomics herbal contraceptive development diabetes and public health i would like to request sir to begin his session on the role of immuno boosting nutrients and herd immunity a double sword for covid 19 over to you sir So your microphone is muted, sir. Like to inform you that for last six uh, hours we are actually in power cut, and thereby the alternative current source is also not working at just uh, 30 minutes before. I am in the dark, so I do not know that uh, how many minutes my computer also support me and the mobile also support me. So at any moment of the presentation, if it is delinked. uh it is not my fault okay okay sir okay sir oh sorry for the interruption so good evening and welcome all of you and i also offering my heartiest thanks and gratitude uh to the okay 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 fine the current is also come okay fine uh i am also offering my heartiest thanks and gratitude to the organizers of this uh one day webinar i also offering my heartiest thanks to the principal of this raja nl khan college and the other faculties research scholars and the students now my topic is even boosting nutrients herd immunity management for covid 19 there are so many information but uh, due to the shortage of the time i don't able to uh, cover it Okay. Is it visible? Is it visible? Hello. Sir. Yes, sir. It is visible. Okay. Okay. Now, this coronavirus that that the novel coronavirus, uh, it is actually not the new infection or new disease. First, it was noted in two thousand three. in china that is the severe acute respiratory syndrome and at that time it was transmitted 
from bat to cat to human and that was uh, please, that uh, was please show, uh, please show please slide slow uh, slide is not showing is it not visible sir sir yes sir is asking you to slide slide show start the slide show sir if possible Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's fine. Okay. So in 2003, it was first noted that coronavirus infection in in our world, and at that time it was transmitted from bat to cat to human, and that was SARS-CoV-1, SARS-CoV-1, and the mortality rate was 10 percent. After nine years, in 2012, again. Coronavirus also infected human, and at that time it was transmitted from camel to human in Arabian Peninsula. And that disease was known as MERS. There is a Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, and the virus was MERS CoV-1. But its mortality rate was 20 to 30 percent. That is double than the SARS CoV-1. Three years after, in 2015, again it appeared Korean Republic. That was MERS CoV-1. And the mortality is also same, that is the 20 to 30 percent. In 2019, December till now, we are also suffering from COVID-19 disease, which was infected by SARS-CoV-2 virus, SARS-CoV-2. That means due to the mutation, SARS-CoV-1 to SARS-CoV-2. The positive point, though actually it is not the positive point, but I like to say that it is a positive point for us that mortality rate is only two to three percent only two to two three percent that is one tenth one tenth of the mass of one and one fifth of the sas of one so it also gives some opportunity for our survivability and uh, and it also provides time for our sustainability through immuno boosting through hard immunity until and unless we can able to develop the vaccine. Now, this COVID-19 disease, it is a contagious disease. It is a contagious disease. Infectious disease, of, of course, but it is a contagious. You know, infectious disease, that is by the infective agent, but it is not spreading from one to other. But contagious disease, that is, it is the infectious disease. It is also by infective agent, but it is also spread from one individual to other individual. So contagious disease means infectious disease, but all infectious disease are not contagious disease. As for example, you know, tetanus it is infectious disease because it is infected by mycobacterium tetany. But if we like to work with tetanus infected individual, there is no chance of the transmission of this disease from that infected person to myself. But COVID-19, it is infected disease as well as a contagious disease. Because if we come in contact of the patient suffering from COVID-19, there is a high chance of the infection. So it is a contagious disease. And for this reason, we are very much cautious about the stoppage of the spreading for controlling of the spreading of the stitches and the hard immunity is only applicable for that contagious disease not the other non-contagious infectious disease and for this reason we are very much uh, interested that how we can able to enrich our immune power so empowerment enrichment recharging of our immune power for our survivability, for our sustainability in that gap period until and unless the vaccine is com coming to our head. Now, the spreading of coronavirus, it is the droplets. And we know the diameter of droplets is more than five micrometers. And during the coughing and sneezing, 40,000 droplets are emitted. 40,000 droplets are emitted. And the speed of individual droplet is more than 200 miles per hour so imagine that how it can able to spread 
So if we do not take a proper precaution through facial mask and social distancing, there is a high chance of this spreading. There is a high chance of the spreading. And we are unable to control this disease. Each droplet contains more than 1,000 coronavirus. More than 1,000 coronavirus. So there is a high chance of uh, loading of the virus in our body. If few droplets are inhaled by a healthy individual from the infected individual. So from that background, we must follow the different guidelines about social engineering. Social engineering, WH also introduced the term social engineering. That is the use of facial masks, social distancing, sanitizer use, avoid of uh, cloudy, cloudy area, etc., etc. So all are social engineering processes. So we must follow it. Otherwise, we are unable to protect ourselves. Now, you know that immune system, there is a defensive system of the body, like the defensive system of a country. And like in country, that, that means there are so many force, like air force and others and others. So similarly, in immune system in our body, that the defensive system of our body, there are so many branches to protect our body from such infective agents. One is known as cellular immunity. I'm not going in details about that. There is acellular immunity or humoral immunity. So this is, this is the one classification. Another classification, that is the innate immunity. Innate, that means within birth. Net, that means birth in within, within birth. That means from birth, we also gain immune power. And that innate immunity is very general immunity, not specific immunity. That means this immunity can able to work against all the diseases in general manner. And thereby, it is not very much powerful. In contrast, there is another immunity, which is known as the acquired immunity or adaptive immunity, which we gain after birth. And there are two ways for uh, acquired immunity gaining process. Well, one is known as natural infection. So if, if an individual is infected by some infective infectious agent, then our immunity power is gradually increased. So that is the natural acquired immunity. And another one, artificial acquired immunity. That means here by vaccination program, where we also introduce low dose of the antigen or low dose of the heat killed or lived inactivated microbacteria, or you may say that is a microbial agent. That can able to stimulate our immune system. So that is known as the artificial acquired immunity. And another one that is the natural acquired immunity. And other one that is, you also know, that the hard immunity. Hard immunity, that means when a major portion of the community major portion of the community become immune against a particular disease, then it is known as the heart immunity. Now, what percentage of the individual would be infected to develop the heart immunity? Heart immunity, you know, that is the populist immunity. Heart immunity is also known that the community immunity. Heart immunity is also known that the social immunity. And on the basis of the degree of the spreading, the percentage of the community members that would be infected to develop the heart immunity would be changed. In case of the COVID-19, the heart immunity would be developed when 60% of the individual, 60% of the community member would be infected. Would be infected. And this heart immunity has been already developing in our community. Because you know that 40% of the infected individual are asymptomatic. 40% of the infected individual, COVID-19 infected individual are asymptomatic. Asymptomatic, that means it indicates that immune power has been developed. Immune power has been developed. And that immune power can be developed through nutritional modification. By the adoption of healthy food, by the adoption of health-friendly lifestyle, health-friendly food style, by which we can able to empower our immune system we can able to recharge our immune system we can able to enrich our immune system and thereby we can able to proceed for the development of the heart immunity until and unless vaccine is come now this immunity innate and acquired i have already mentioned another there is a barrier immunity you know barrier immunity 
One is the physical barrier, that the skin is a physical barrier, you also know it. There is a chemical barrier. Chemical barrier, that means that the lysogen, which is present in our saliva, as well as the tears, HCl in the gas in the gastric juice. This is the chemical substance that can able to destroy so many disease producing bacteria. So these are the chemical barriers. So if the chemical barriers is destroyed, then we are very much susceptible to several infections. Another barrier is the biological barrier. This biological barrier is mainly present along the mucosal line of the respiratory tract as well as in our GI tract. You know that along the mucosal layer of the GI tract as well as the respiratory tract, the lymphoid tissue is present, which is known as the malt, that the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue. But there are so many immune cells that are present, and these immune cells act as a barrier for the invasion of these infective agents to our circulatory system. So it is a biological barrier. Similarly, in the gut, GALT is present, GALT, GLT, that is the gut associated lymphoid tissue, gut associated lymphoid tissue. So the malt and the GALT are the most important biological barrier and with the help of the nutrient we can able to maintain the health of this mucosal cell line of the GI tract and the respiratory tract and so the biological barrier can able to execute its function at proper level that can able to resist that microbial infection and by this slide I like to represent that first exposure and the subsequent exposure the rate of the antibody level is gradually increased so if our if our nutrition status is okay for the formation of that antibody so at the different unlock phase unlock unlock phase one phase two phase three phase four and this today is the last phase of this unlock four and from tomorrow we also enter in the unlock five so in this unlock phase we are gradually exposed to that covid 19 because there are so many offices has been open we are also going to the market and so we are also exposed to the low dose of this COVID-19. And due to such subsequent low dose of exposure, if our nutrition status is okay, then the antibody level will raise us the immunity, and which can able to forward for the development of the heart immunity. And when the antibody level comes to its tighter level, then we can achieve our heart immunity and we can able to resist our body from such infection. Now, why we are very much interested about this immunoboosting activity, immunoboosting phenomenon, as well as the heart immunity? You know that the vaccine is coming. Vaccine is coming. But the history about the vaccine development against virus is not very good. It's not very good. I am willing that vaccine will come from tomorrow. But it is not possible. I am saying that vaccine will come in tomorrow for COVID-19, but it is not possible. We must wait a few months. Because from history, it has been noted that AIDS, 1981, 39 years covered, we are unable to develop vaccine. SARS, 2003, 17 years passed away, we are unable to develop vaccine. March. 2012, eight hours passed away. We are unable to develop vaccine. Zika virus, 1947, that is our independence year. 73 years passed away, we are unable to develop vaccine. Chickenpox, after 42 years, we obtained this vaccine. Hepatitis B, after 16 years, we obtained the vaccine. Ebola, after 43 years, we obtained this vaccine. So from this history, our experience is not very good. Though you hope that the vaccine is coming in the next month or the next after that month but i do not know that what is it possible so in that period we must sustain and for the sustainability it is our duty to enhance our immune power to end to uh, to uh, recharge our immune power by food style by lifestyle modification and so that we can able to develop the heart immune. Now, heart immunity that I have already mentioned, large portion of a community that is heart, large portion of community that is heart. And when the immunity against a particular disease is developed in large portion of the community, then it is not the heart immunity. And for the development of heart immunity, two most important sensors. One is known as the threshold proportion, TP, and another one, HIT, that is the heart immunity threshold. 
what is threshold proportion tp percentage of population must be capable of getting a disease in order for it to spread percentage of population that would be infected for spreading of this disease that is not the threshold proportion and when community become immune more than threshold potential more than threshold potential then this is known as the hard immunity threshold hard immunity threshold it has been noted that for the covid 19 this hard immunity threshold hit is also vary from 50 to 83 percent 50 percent to 83 percent and that is also depend on the so many so many uh, factors and in average it has been calculated that it is about 60 percent and when it is hard immunity attain 83 percent we are sure that we can save ourselves we can perform our work beside SARS-CoV-2 virus besides SARS-CoV-2 virus so hard immunity development or community immunity or public immunity or social immunity or population immunity because in hard immunity i have already mentioned that more than 60 percent population would be infected so healthcare infrastructure should be developed because at the time of infection there may be mild infection may be moderate infection may be severe infection and so the healthcare infrastructure should be should be developed against the severe severe condition not the mild or moderate our state government is also working their level best, try to their level best to develop this healthcare infrastructure. They also set up so many COVID hospital, so many safe home for that for that purpose. So it is it is also operating at a very uh, good condition. And then the data university, it is our duty to change our health style and uh, lifestyle and food style. We do not follow that fast food, junk food, processed food, and pizza food. All these foods are actually immunoweakening foods, immunoweakening. So we must emphasize on the traditional food, on the general food, on pizza food, on processed food, and natural foods. Another one, the lifestyle and food style modification. Food style and lifestyle modification. Healthy food style, healthy lifestyle should be adopted to check this COVID-19 infection. And in that connection, I like to say that we have also some positive points. As well as we have also some negative points to fight against COVID-19 from the Indian scenario. First of all, we know that vitamin D is very much important for immune activity. We know that vitamin is essential for bone formation and teeth formation. These are the classical concepts. But for last two decades, so many research has been conducted on vitamin D, and the non-classical function has been noted that vitamin D is most important immunoboosting. It is actually a superstar for immunoboosting activity. And out of the vitamin D, which is present in our body, 70% vitamin D synthesized in skin under sunlight. Under sunlight. From the geographical point of view, latitude and longitude, the UVB light exposure in India is very high. UVB light, not UVA and UVC, these are not essential for vitamin D synthesis in skin. UVB light exposure is very much essential. And from the study, it has been indicated that UVB light exposure in India is noted from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. We have also a misconception that UVB light is more above um, before 8 a.m. Before 8 a.m. No, after 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And this sunlight, sun bathing, that is you know the heliotherapy, is most important for vitamin D synthesis. In the last month, one paper has been published from Texas University. And they also conducted the study on COVID-19 patients with vitamin D. And most interesting study they also conducted that twin study. Twin study. One was affected by COVID-19 and another was not. And they noted that the partner of the twin having high vitamin D from COVID-19. And the individual who are suffering from this COVID-19 that have a low plasma vitamin D level. 
in our country if we study it you know that the that the uh, incidence rate of the covid-19 in the in the worker section of the community worker daily worker daily worker in that community the incident rate of the covid-19 is very low it's very low and it is very high in elite group elite elite group who are actually confined themselves within room who are not exposed their body in the sunlight and it has been noted that vitamin d level is also low so there is a correlation there is a there is a there is a, uh, there, is a negative, there is a negative correlation between high level of vitamin d and covid-19 infection another positive point for the development of the herd immunity in indian scenario is that from the demographic study of the indian population it has been noted that below 90% population 90% population indian population is below 60 years where the covid fatality rate is less than 3% so it is our positive point that as the fatality rate is less than 3% of the age group below 60 years and in that age group 90% of indian population is actually covered so we can able to develop the heart immunity. and another point is that up to 30% up to 30 years of age actually 38% of the indian population cover this age group where the covid-19 fatality rate is 0.3% 0.3% and thereby our government also proposed a, a proposed an approach that that at the unlock phase 1 unlock phase 2 they also allow the worker that is the office, officers and other other uh, professional workers not above the age of 50 or 55 above 55 they actually directed to stay in home and, and unlock phase three and unlock phase, unlock, unlock phase four it is actually gradually increased so that is is another policy for the development of the heart immunity but there are so many negative points also in indian scenario one is that we are also residing residing joint family where elder and youngers live together elder and young live together so when youngers come to the outside and exposure to the covid 19 and when they came to their residence there is a chance of the exposure of this covid 19 to the elder one to the elder one so we must cautious about that and slum areas no space for isolation of the elders that is another negative point another negative point most interesting is that where 38 percent of the of the indian population having the age group below 30 but 22 percent of the younger suffering from hypertension and that is sometimes it is known as the juvenile hypertension and that is due to the bad food style unhealthy food style unhealthy lifestyle and these hypertensive patients if suffering from covid 19 then fatal rate would be increased four percent of the young are also diabetic which was 0.3 percent at present is a four percent and that is also due to the unhealthy food style and if diabetic individuals are infected by SARS-CoV-2 then their fatality rate is also high so it is also a negative point 33 percent of the youngers are also in tobacco smoking and thereby their lung health is also deteriorated and we know that SARS-CoV-2 as for uh, from the lecture of Professor Nundi, he also explained properly that uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus all mainly infected the alveolar epithelial cells. And as the alveolar epithelial alveolar health or the lung health is bad in case of the younger group, which is the strong point for the heart immunity, but there is also some weak point because the lung health is not very good of the of our young community. 42 percent of the younger generation also suffering from pulmonary disease so these are the negative points in spite of that we must proceed with proper precaution so that we can charge our immune system and we can able to develop the heart immunity. so heart immunity why we are very much interested for heart immunity and immune boosting because at present there is no specific medicine against covid 19 we have no medicine in our hand against COVID-19. Vaccine not available. So which is in our hand? Only that will pattern 
which is in our grip. Social engineering is in our grip, and gradual withdrawal of lockdown is also within our grip. And through this model, I I I have tried my level best to present that how this herd immunity is developed. This is the first phase of the community, where the black color indicates healthy individual but not immune to pathogen. Healthy individual but not immune to pathogen. And the green, that is the immune against pathogen. At the first phase, there is no immune person against COVID, against SARS-CoV-2. And red color infected by pathogen, that is a 20%. In the phase two, it has been noted that out of 10, three individuals immune themselves against SARS-CoV-2. And thereby, the healthy individual but not immune has been decreased and the infected pathogen, infected person by that pathogen remains same. And the phase three, it has been noted that immune person becomes 60%, that the green color becomes 60%. So that is the immune person population, immune population, immune population against SARS-CoV-2 is gradually increased. And that is the line for, for the development of the heart immunity. In the first phase, if we study this line, then the COVID-19 infection, COVID-19 incident rate is gradually increased. And after the phase two or phase three, if we if when we actually achieve this 60% immune, we are actually far away from that, then this line will come to the baseline and there is no panic about COVID-19. And that is the another model. I have not described this model again. Now, for the development of herd immunity, for the development of immunoboosting, we must go through social vaccination. Social vaccination, not vaccination, social vaccination. What is social vaccination? That is through information, education, and communication, IEC. IEC, information, education, and communication, we can, we can perform the social vaccination program. That means through information, education, and communication system, we can spread the knowledge, spread the knowledge. And knowledge about this COVID-19 can able to change the attitude or mindset of, of the community individuals or community members. Because healthy knowledge can able to develop healthy attitude. And due to the attitude, it can able to change the healthy practice, not practice, healthy practice. Bad practice would be erased and the healthy practice would be imprinted in our mind. We follow this in our daily life. That is the practice. So knowledge, attitude, and practice. Professor Nandi also mentioned CAP model. That is the knowledge for K, attitude for A, and practice for P. That is the CAP model. And this practice, through practice, we also accept the social engineering. That is, we also use the facial mask. It becomes practice. Like myself, this, this facial mask is also hanging my, from my pinna in all, all and every, in each and every time. So we must practice it. We also maintain the social distancing. We also use the sanitation. And as a result, the drop down of the COVID-19 spreading would be performed. And that also helps the immune boosting as well as the heart rate. Another arm of that, through knowledge, proper knowledge, we can able to remove the panic, fear about COVID-19. Why panic is more dangerous? Because due to the panic, reactive oxygen species is developed in our cells, including our immune cells, like singlet oxygen, like superoxide anion, like hydroxyl radical, hydrogen peroxyl radical, these are the ROS. And when a high level of ROS is formed due to the panic, our immune cells, our soldiers, are unable to execute their function properly against SARS-CoV-2. And as a result, immune power will be dropped down and we are prone to contagious stages like COVID-19. So through IC, through knowledge, we can able to remove, we try our level best to remove the panic from the society about COVID-19 so that ROS formation can be minimized and thereby the immune power drop down can be interfere and we can able to fight against COVID-19 properly. Now, so food is the most important thing. Food is the most important thing for immune empowerment, for immune enrichment, for immune church. 
and it was this concept was given by Hippocrates, father of medicine, long, long ago, about four thousand, four thousand before Christ. He mentioned that his concept was that food is your medicine, and medicine is your food. We do not give special emphasis on this concept, but in twenty first century, we also we also gives huge importance on this concept. And in this present research, it has been indicated that nutrients, that is the component of the food, can able to modulate your gene expression. Gene expression can be can be modulated either in positive direction or negative direction, and that is not the nutrigenomics. It has been indicated that several nutrients like vitamin D can able to switch on some peptides that I like to mention the later on, later on my next slides. Most important peptides, human beta defensive two protein, and one is another one, the catholicidine. The catholicidine gene and human beta defensive two gene, the both this gene expression is triggered by vitamin D3. And these two peptides are most important to fight against RNA enveloped virus like SARS CoV 2. Okay, like SARS CoV 2. So, reinforcement of immunity. Reinforcement of immunity, that is, by emphasis on immuno empowered nutrients and by rejection of immuno weakening nutrients. What are immuno weakening nutrients? I have already mentioned fast food, junk food, processed food, pizza food. Because these food any vitamins and minerals, which are most important immuno booster, and these foods contain mainly the saturated food. And a uh, uh, saturated fat, sorry, and trans fat, which are most important immuno weakener. So immuno power, immuno empower foodstuffs, foodstuffs that is the first class protein, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin K, zinc, selenium, antioxidant nutraceutical. There are so many antioxidant nutraceutical. Professor Nondi also mentioned the like lycopene, catechin, galacatechin, apicalatechin, galate, etc., etc. Lifestyle components like sound sleep. These are the most important. At least six to seven hours sound sleep is essential per day to maintain the crosstalk among neural system, endocrine system, and immune system. There is a crosstalk which is going on among neuro endocrine immune axis. And during this sound sleep, through through cytokines, the Recharge, charging and recharging of the immune system is controlled under neural and endocrine system. So if we avoid our sound sleep, then immune boosting is not possible. Another one, rhythmic and regular food intake. This is the most important. Regularity and rhythmicity should be maintained. You know that there is a branch of biology which deals about the rhythmic activity that is not the chronobiology. Chronobiology. So if we avoid the chronobiology, suppose we go to bed one day at 10 p.m., another day, 1 a.m., another 3 a.m. So such arrhythmic activities, daily activities, regional immuno weakening, sun bathing, at least 20 to 25 minutes per day. 20 to 25 minutes. Bright, bright skin, only 15 minutes to 20 minutes sufficient where melanin level is low and black skin like myself that the sun bathing is at least 20 to 25 minutes and that should be from 10 a.m to 3 p.m and you know that sun bathing is a habit it is a practice of western countries of western countries now vitamin d i like to emphasize on vitamin d that is a non-classical function of the vitamin d for immuno boosting activity you know that vitamin D3 for its activation, the biotransformation is essential, which is performed by hydroxylation reaction. The first hydroxylation is going on in the liver, then the hepatocyte cells, and the second in the kidney cell. In the second in the kidney cell. So that is that is our previous concept. But at present, regarding the biotransformation of the vitamin D3, it has been focused that. The second hydroxylation is not only noted in the renal cells, but also immune cells like T lymphocytes. That the lymphocytes which are processed, which are which are processed, activated in the thymus gland, then the T lymphocytes. And T lymphocytes also several types. You also know helper T cell, killer T cell, 
suppressor T cell, memory T cell, T helper cell is also T helper 0, T helper 1, T helper 2 and so on. And another B cell, B lymphocytes, which are also processed and activated in the bursa, in case of bar, which is present in the cloaca. But in human, there is no bursa. And these B lymphocytes are processed and activated in bone marrow. Okay. So these T cell, B cell, macrophage, dendritic cells, all cells have the potentiality for the hydro second hydrosylation of the vitamin D3. And this active vitamin D3 in immune cells has immense role, indisputable role for immunocharging. I like to focus one by one that vitamin D3 again act against respiratory tract infection very effectively than other vitamin, vitamin C or vitamin A. And you know that SARS-CoV-2 mainly attack this respiratory tract, mainly the alveoli of the respiratory system. So here vitamin D3 exerts its immense role. It has antiviral activity against envelope virus like SARS-CoV-2. And I have also mentioned that it upregulates the specific gene, catalyst in gene. And this catalyst in gene expression in the macrophage is enhanced, is triggered under vitamin D3. And this catalyst in peptide executes its function, executes its function for the degradation of this RNA enveloped virus like SARS-CoV-2. What are these pathways? I like to focus later on. Another one, human beta defensive T protein, human beta defensive 2, HBD2 gene expression is also enhanced by vitamin D3. And it has also an immense role against SARS-CoV-2. Yes. That I like to say that if the vitamin D, that vitamin D with the tall like receptor can able to bind with the macrophage or polymorphonuclear leukocytes, which is known as the microphage. Polymorphonucleoside, known as the mic microphage, and monocyte that's the macrophage. The side is side is the side is more, so it's the macro. And the polymorphonuclear nuclear leukocytes, that is the neutrophil, their size is less, and so in the microphage. But both have hygiene activity. That's the engulfed. So if vitamin D can able to bind with macrophage, okay, with the help of tall like receptors, then within this macrophage, within this microphage, that is the neutrophil, it can able to develop the, it can able to start the catalyst in gene expression. It can able to start the human beta defensive D, human beta defensive 2 peptide. And these two peptides are very much essential to fight against SARS-CoV-2. SARS -CoV so this is the first one. I like to uh, explain this that slide uh, later on. Another, another way by on through which vitamin D can able to balance the pro-inflammatory pro cytokines and anti-inflammatory cytokines. First one, if vitamin D is not present in sufficient level, if vitamin D deficiency state is maintained when COVID-19, that the SARS-CoV-2 attacks the macrophage. And in this macrophage, vitamin D3 level is low. What will happen? Then through cytokine, it can able to stimulate T helper 1 cells. And T helper 1 cells can able to release interleukin 1, interleukin 6, interleukin 17, and interleukin 21. Interleukin, that means that is the interlink the different leukocytes interlink among leukocytes that substance is generally known as interleukin okay and high level of interleukin 1 6 17 21 that is known as the cytokine storm which is generally noted under sars cov 2 infection if vitamin d is not present in sufficient level that results inflammation in the pulmonary alveoli and due to the pulmonary alveoli inflammation the alveolar wall become thick, the gases deficient rate would be decreased, oxygen saturation in our blood would be diminished, and results that is the respiratory troubles. And it is known as acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, or respiratory tract infection, ATI, respiratory tract infection. So this in this scenario would be developed when vitamin D level is low in the macrophage. But when vitamin D is present sufficient in the macrophage, what will happen? Now SARS-CoV-2 attacks the macrophage. Now in presence of vitamin D, this macrophage can able to develop with the help of with the help of T helper cell 2, 
cannibal to religion, interleukin 4, interleukin 5, interleukin 10, and these are known as anti inflammatory cytokines. Anti inflammatory cytokines. Pro inflammatory cytokines not only result in inflammation of the pulmonary alveoli, but it also induces MOF. There's a multi organ failure. And as a result, renal failure would be noted in uh, SARS CoV 2 virus infection. Cardiac failure is also noted, heart failure is also noted in this SARS CoV 2 virus infection. But if the anti inflammatory cytokines are produced in high level, that anti inflammatory cytokines dominated over pro inflammatory cytokines, then the probability, possibility of MOF would be diminished. And the SARS CoV 2 infected individual with high level of vitamin D can able to fight against this RNA envelope virus and vital organs would not be filled, there is a high chance of survivability. There is a high chance of survival. I am not discussing this slide. Yes, this is the most important slide. This is the macrophage. Okay. Now this macrophage, that is a 125 diet sequel role with the help of receptor vitamin D receptor can able to transmit the nucle nucleolus of that cell and bind with the specific gene, catholicid in gene, and result the translation of catholicid in peptide. What is the function of the catholicid in peptide? First one, catholicid in stimulate chemotaxis. You know chemotaxis, that is the movement of the neutrophil, monocytes, macrophages from the blood capillaries to the infected tissue space infected tissue space and this shifting or the movement of these phagocytic cells or the defensive cells towards the zone of infection is known as chemotaxis. So this chemotaxis activity will be enhanced, will be triggered in presence of catholicidine. That means it acts as a chemotactic enhancer and thereby immune response will be increased, macrophage activity, phagocytic activity will be increased. Okay. Another one is that catholicidine is also helps the diapidesis. What is diapidesis? You also know that when the polymorphonuclear leukocytes leave the tunica intima of the capillary and comes to the tissue, that movement is known as the diapidesis. And this diapidesis is enhanced by catholicidine because catholicidine can able to increase the permeability of the capillary bed, capillary bed, and thereby. Our soldiers, our immune cells can able to diffuse, can able to move from the capillary bed to the non-capillary, non-vascular bed, that is the tissue space where the SARS-CoV-2 is present. They can able to encircle it and thereby try to destroy it. Another one is that catholicity can able to proliferate and activate the T cell and B cell. And as a result, the T cell and B cell population size would be increased. And you know that T cell is responsible for cellular immunity and B cell for humoral immunity. So in presence of catholicity, both the cellular as well as the humoral wing of the immunity would be charged and synergistic effect against SARS-CoV-2 would be executed properly. Another one, human beta defensive 2 peptide, which is which gene expression is also enhanced by vitamin D3. It can able to bind at the envelope of the SARS CoV 2 and results the poor, results poor. Side by side, it also destroys the architecture of the envelope where the antigens of the SARS CoV 2 is present. So, and due to the disorganization of the architecture of the envelope of this SARS CoV 2, its antigenicity, its antigenicity would be destroyed. So, by the modulation of antigenicity, by the modulation of pathogenicity through HBD2, vitamin D3 plays an important role. Uh, this is the same thing, I do not repeat it. Yes, these are there are so many papers that is the vitamin D metabolism and immune cells activity, catholicidine and vitamin D3. And that is D3 supplementation may prevent millions of winter infection. Okay. Another immunomodulator that is the zinc. Zinc has antiviral activity and immunomodulator. It inhibits binding of virus on the target cell receptor. You know that, H, that SARS CoV 2 binds with 
angiotensin converting in the receptor along the pulmonary alveoli and zinc also act at that site and thereby the possibility of the binding of the SARS-CoV-2 with this ACE receptor would be interfered in presence of zinc. Zinc also interfered in the host cell of the viral replication, viral transcription, as well as the protein translation. So, though the RNA enters into the host cell, but if the zinc is present, then the viral RNA synthesis, viral RNA replication, viral protein translation would be interfered and thereby the proliferation of the virus within the host cell would be decreased and as a result viral loading in the host cell would be diminished that may charge the immune cells that means it's just like a artificial vaccination process artificial vaccination process that means we are infected by SARS-CoV-2 but due to the presence of the gene due to the presence of the vitamin D3 they are unable to proliferate. So the patho pathogen loading is not at the tighter level, but we are exposed at a very low dose, just like artificial vaccination process. And as a result, our immune system would be charged. Our immune activity would be enhanced. That may lead to the herd immunity. And side by side, we can able to survive ourselves. And we can provide sufficient time for the coming COVID-19 vaccine. Now, zinc, how the zinc can able to control these immune cells or result the immune boosting? You know that in the cells against this loss, there are so many enzymes, antioxidant enzymes, like superoxidase mutase, like catalase, like peroxidase. And that antioxidant can able to destroy the loss. It is well known, all of you. So zinc deficiency, where the zinc is the most important component of SOD, so zinc deficiency, SOD is unable to execute its function properly. So the oxygen stress in immune cells would be increased. And as a result, these immune cells are unable to execute its function properly. But if the zinc is present, then it fine bind with zinc finger protein. And that zinc finger protein can able to, the zinc is also a, a, a neutral genomic agent. It is a micronutrient and it can able to it can able to switch on and switch off the particular gene. Pro-inflammatory gene would be switched off in presence of gene. But the anti-inflammatory gene, I have already mentioned that what, what are the interleukins which are anti-inflammatory? What are the interleukins which are pro-inflammatory? So pro-inflammatory interleukins expression would be diminished in presence of the gene through switch off gene switch off process. And Anti-inflammatory cytokines would be announced through gene switch off, switch on process. So by this way, uh, gene can able to results immunocharging, immunoboosting, and immunohyperactivation. Vitamin C has an also immense role. I am not going in details about that. It can able to enhance the production of T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes. Uh, it also produces the activity of the antibody production and so on. I like to focus a specific slide that why we actually mention that diabetic patients, if infected by COVID-19, then the SARS-CoV-2, their fatality rate is high. Why? They are not prone to COVID-19. Mind that. Diabetic patients are not prone to COVID-19. But question is that if diabetic patients are infected by SARS-CoV-2, then their fatality rate is more than the non-diabetic patient. Why? Because if we go to the cytoskeleton of the capillary bed of the diabetic patient, you know that from the capillary cell membrane, so many proteins are also projected towards the lumen surface as per the fluid mosaic model of the cell membrane structure. Due to the high level of the glucose, that is the red color, red, red color, these are the glucose. This glucose can able to bind with this protein and that process in the glycosylation. So due to this glycosylation, the luminal diameter of the blood vessel, especially the capillary bed, would be decreased because huge glucose molecules also attach with this protein. And it's a glycosylated protein. Glycosylated protein. So due to the diminution in the luminal diameter of the capillary bed, especially the pulmonary capillary bed, the gas exchange level would be decreased, and that results several trouble in the in the uh, breathing. Another one is that 
due to the high level of the glucose in diabetic condition. Uh, and desensitization to insulin or defect of the insulin receptor, glucose utilization in the immune cells is low. And the free fatty acid utilization is high for energy production. As a result, the immune cell environment become acidic. Immune cell environment become acidic. And due to such acidic environment, the cell performance, cell performance, that the T cell performance, B cell, B lymphocyte performance, and the T cell, B cell crosstalk, T cell, B cell interlink system would be interfered. And as a result, both the cellular and the humoral immunity not able to act in a synergistic manner in diabetic patient, which is performed by non-diabetic patient when they are infected by SARS-CoV-2. Another one is that when the macrophage, neutrophil, all these cells having low glucose utilization with a high level of free fatty acid, such, such or shifting of this metabolism. Can able to decrease. Can able to decrease the neutrophil activity. So all these events are noted in case of the diabetic individuals, and as a result, it creates a favorable condition for low oxygen, low oxygenation in the blood, and thereby oxygen saturation is decreased, and that may enhance the fatality. These are the zinc requirement, vitamin C requirement, vitamin D requirement, and then the foods high in zinc, high in vitamin C, high in vitamin D, nine immunoboosting plant foods, papaya, garlic, citrus fruits, green tea, spinach, broccoli, apple, I'm not going in details about that. Uh, so we must follow some health-friendly lifestyle. There's a walking 30 miles per day. This is very much essential for immune activity because due to the walking, as for example, uh, like yoga, walking is also helpful for cytokine release, for cytokine release. And that cytokine also uh, charges the immune system. Sleep seven to eight hours, I have already mentioned. Timely eating and wake up timely this is the most important. And all such biology is very much essential for immunoboosting activity. Physical inactivity should be avoided. Minimum sleep should be avoided. Irregular sleep should be avoided. Anxiety should be removed. Irregular food eating pattern should be removed. By this lifestyle, we can able to maintain the immunoboosting activity properly. So I have three slogans for the community awareness against COVID-19. First one, not fear, but hope. Bhaipyon, asara. Fear only on the people. Not, not fear, but hope. Second slogan, the biggest virus is not coronavirus, but fear. And third slogan, our duty to stop panic. Because panic is the most important virus that results loss in immune cells. And thereby our immune soldiers become weak and we are unable to fight against COVID-19. Okay, so this is all about the short information about vitamin D, zinc, and other vitamins like vitamin C for immunoboosting activity, and how immunoboosting can able to help the heart immunity. At this interval, until and unless we can develop the vaccine. So at present, we have only two shows in our hand. One is known as immunoboosting and other one is the heart immunity. By their joint activity, we can able to, we can try our level best to sustain, to survive ourselves until and unless the long waiting vaccine is coming. So I offer my heartiest thanks to all of you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, sir was such an informative and relevant session in today's pandemic situation. Thank you. Thank you again. Now I would like to move on to our next session and our last session for the evening. We are very thankful to have with us Dr. Shubal Das. He's the assistant professor 
डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी एंड ट्राइबल डेवलपमेंट गुरु घासीदास विश्वविद्यालय विच इज अंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी इन बिलासपुर छत्तीसगढ़ He has also worked as an assistant director, UGC HRDC GGV, from 2015 to the year 2018. He has completed one UGC startup project from 2015 to 17. He is the author of 55 publications in national and international journals, 11 book chapters, and one whole book. currently two research scholars are working under his supervision i would like to request sir to start his session on the vital role of nutrition in combating disease in this pandemic situation over to you sir professor dr shubal das sir can you hear me yeah very good good evening to all and thank you thank you for inviting me uh, i would like to thank all the organizing committee the principal ma'am and uh, uh, other organizing uh, secretaries for giving me an opportunity to talk with uh, I think there is some kind of a technical problem. Uh, it was disconnected due to one call from my colleague in the department. Yes, sir. sorry. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Please continue. Uh, uh, thanks also goes to uh, all the previous speakers for their very interesting and informative talk, uh, and who are actually the teachers of mine, because they are the colleagues of my teachers and supervisors, uh, Dr. Koshik Bose sir and Dr. Sudip Dasta Bani sir. i thank to devida koshar and dilip nandi sir mm. before starting mm, the topic that is how nutrition plays vital role in combating disease and in pandemic situation i would like to say ki let food be your medicine and medicine be your food from various researches it has been clear that both nutrient intake and incidence of the disease usually influence the nutrition status that is in adequate diet and infectious disease can lead to severe malnutrition currently as we know the covid-19 pandemic is the leading challenge across the globe therefore scientists and researchers are attempting to create a specific vaccine for this virus but no avail so far even if they were able to find vaccine method vaccination method they there is a high possibility that other anti microbial resistance infection will prevail in society thus nutrition status is very important to maintain a strong immune system against the virus if we see the very basic definition of nutrition we will find that it is it is the intake of nutrients like carbohydrates protein fats minerals vitamins uh, for proper growth maintenance and development of the body now why why the ever said definition is important to understand the role of nutrients in such pandemic situation because adequate and appropriate nutrition is required for all cells to function optimally this includes cells in the immune system too and this immune system demands for energy and nutrients this energy and nutrients can be made from either exogenous source or endogenous source exogenous source means the diet and the endogenous sources are the body stores some micronutrients and dietary components have very specific role in the development and maintenance of an effective immune system throughout the life courses or in reducing chronic inflammation 
according to who it states that viral infections are one of the world's greatest public health challenges if you see the who guidelines on diet especially during the current pandemic state that good nutrition is crucial for health particularly in times when the immune system might need to fight back according to the european journal of clinical nutrition without adequate nutrition the immune system is clearly deprived of the components needed to generate an effective immune response in very brief i would like to explain about the essential nutrients intake in combating disease in pandemic situation it has already been discussed by david as gosher but still uh, but i have prepared a little bit of preparation that i have made i should say i should share the first one is the vitamin d the vitamin d is the sunshine hormone can be synthesized in our body with the help of sunlight plays a role in bone integrity stimulates the maturation of cells including immune system people who are housebound institutionalized night workers may have vitamin d deficiency something to consider in the current pandemic as we know that covid-19 was first identified in winter of 2019 in northern hemisphere affect mostly middle aged and elderly people vitamin d reduces the risk of acute respiratory infection the second micronutrient that is fat soluble vitamin that is vitamin a three active forms of vitamin a in the body that is retinol retinal and retinoic acid called the anti infective vitamin and many of the body's defense against infection depends on adequate supply an impaired immune response could be due to the deficiency of vitamin a vitamin a deficiency is strongly involved in measles and diarrhea and measles can become severe in vitamin a deficiency vitamin a supplementation reduces morbidity and mortality in infectious disease such as measles diarrheal disease measles related pneumonia hiv infection and malaria the effect of infection with infectious virus ivv a kind of coronavirus was more pronounced in chicken fed a lower vitamin the a diet third vitamin is vitamin b water soluble vitamin work as a part of coenzyme each b vitamin has a special function like b2 b2 plays a role in energy metabolism of all cells b3 could enhance the killing of staphylococcus aureus effective in prophylactic and therapeutic setting significantly inhibited neutrophil infiltration into the lungs with strong anti inflammatory effect during ventilator induced lung injury it led however to the development of significant hypoxemia next is the vitamin b6 needed in protein metabolism Partic participates in over 100 reactions in body plays an important role in body immune function shortage of b6 vitamins may weaken host immune response recommended to supplement to virus infected patients to enhance their immune system next is vitamin c it is water soluble vitamin also called sorbic acid plays a role in the synthesis of collagen and excretions act as an antioxidant supports immune function a significantly lower incidence of pneumonia in vitamin c so suggests that vitamin c may prevent the susceptibility to lower respiratory tract infection under certain conditions covid-19 causes lower respiratory tract infection vitamin c could be an effective choice as a part of the treatment plan treatment plan next is the zinc there is also micronutrients dietary trace minerals found in different cell fish important for the maintenance and development of immune cells of both the innate and adaptive immune system zinc deficiency results in dysfunctions of both humoral and cell mediated immunity and increases susceptibility susceptibility to infection infectious disease zinc supplementation given to the zinc deficient children could reduce measles related morbidity and mortality caused by lower respiratory tract infection 
increasing the concentration of intracellular zinc the zinc ionophores like pyrithion can efficiently impair the replication of a variety of rna virus it has been observed that the combination of zinc and pyrithion in a low concentration inhibits the replication of sars coronavirus world health organization suggested some nutrition advice during the covid-19 outbreak these are eat fresh and unprocessed food every day drink enough water every day eat moderate amount of fat and oil eat less salt and sugar thus we can say that nutrition is a sign required for a healthy life world is facing a pandemic situation where food and nutrition plays a vital role in boosting the immunity of the population and also helps in the intervention and if we want to boost the immunity in this current pandemic we have to follow the app which means the adequate nutrition physical activity and proper sleep following this app regularly ensures good health and keep us away from many disease condition i would like to end up my talk again with words of hippocrates that if we could give every individual the right amount of nourishment and exercise not too little and not too much we would have such a way of health thank you thank you very much thank you thank you so much sir for such an interesting session with this i would again like to thank all four speakers are you are you super fun how are you fine sir fine i am dr sir fine i am okay very nice sir sir i know sir follow achi tumko onek din por dekhla pabe onek din por dekhla tumar ta sir ami onek khushi ami onek khushi okay thank you thank you very much mudra welcome sir welcome sir yes sir yes thank sir, you sir. thank you so much sir i would again like to thank all our resource persons for the evening for their contribution and with this we come to the end of our scientific sessions for today's webinar now I'd like to request our hod padma ma'am to begin with the question answer sessions over to you ma'am first of all i'd like like to thank all the speakers we faced a little technical error Uh, during the beginning of the session and i'm thankful for all the speakers for being so patient and waiting throughout the uh, technical glitch so the participants they had asked some questions uh, so sir if you are uh, dr padma for the question yes sir uh, dr padma ah uh, it will be actually a lip form professional coach you know dr And we try to answer each and every participant. Those are ask the most. Send to the mail. Okay, sir. Otherwise, if the few questions are only have to answer questions, are already answered by the board. And if you are if you are asked, please please continue. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. So as uh, Dr. Dilip Kumar Nandi. mentioned so most of the topics most of the questions that have been asked by the participants yeah. they have been answered during the presentations so we will move on with the vote of thanks uh, nirmali sir if you are here hello just one question. just one, one, one or two questions yes sir okay sir so i'll ask yes yes sir uh, so since your presentation focused on the yoga and the mental health also so one question we had yeah yeah okay uh, so how the mental health will be handled by nutrition and what type of nutrition is essential for mental health sir what what type of sir so many nutrient there is no specific nutrient the nutrient maximum for the foods particularly foods and the recipes and so many recipes and uh, are to helpful for our uh, uh, from the mental or indeed of the mental mainly the regenerating and also the uh, foods of the vitamins minerals and so many foods particularly uh, in case of uh, nutritional some nutritional already available in the market 
he helpful for the uh, improvement of the reader. Actually, uh, not only Pacific, he is an amalgamated star, and also the recipients for the development of the reader. Because the matter has limited our brain, and brain function is uh, improving. When you are uh, synthesis or the signal uh, process is uh, is uh, doing <coughs> uh, quite okay. Then uh, it is uh, modulated by the sufficiency of the protein, uh, uh, the first class protein, up with the mineral so that. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Actually, I, I, I did not uh, know everything. I think Sir is facing a little technical difficulty. His voice is not clear. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible now. Okay. Okay. Any question or any other cause? Uh, uh, it is a cover up today. That's why uh, I got a view in this. Uh, we had to hand over the end of the to for the performance. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. So thank you for answering one question. As we are facing some network errors, so all the participants who have asked yeah, the yeah. questions, we will send you the answers in the feedback mail. Uh, so Nirmalia, sir, if you yeah. please. Thank you. Okay, good, evening. good evening, everybody. Honorable Principal Madam of Yaja Anirkan Ombes College, Dr. Jawashi Laha, the chairperson of this webinar, honorable speakers, dignitaries and my dear students. We are very much grateful to our principal matter for the kind inspiration of such program. I am very much thankful and grateful to Dr. Dilip Kumar Nondisa, the Associate Professor, Department of Physiology and Head Department of PMI of Raja Narendra Lal Khan Omnes College for his valuable speech on the role of yoga as functional sports for the health intervention in COVID-19 pandemic situation and convey my deep sense of gratitude to Dr. Debna Chaudhary, sir, Professor, Department of Dietetics and Nutrition, NSHM Knowledge Campus, former Professor and Head, Department of Biochemistry and Nutrition of All India Institute of Health and Hygiene and public health for his valuable speech on first thousand days crucial for optimal health. I am conveying my deep sense of gratitude to Professor David S. Ghosh, Professor, Department of Biomedical Laboratory Science and Management with the Southern University, sir, for his valuable and thoughtful speech on Immuno boosting nutrient and heart immunity double showed of COVID-19. I am also grateful to Dr. Shubal Das, Asian Professor, Department of Anthropology and Tribal Development, Guru Ghasi Das, Vishwabhidalaya, a Central University, for his valuable speech on vital role of nutrition in combating disease in pandemic situation. I am also grateful and thankful to all the faculty members of these three departments like UG and PG Department of Nutrition, NSS and NCC for successfully continuing the program. And I am also thankful to Mr. Onimus Banna for the total technical support of this webinar. 
and I, lastly but not least, I am thankful to all the participants from all over the country who come and have joined in this webinar to make it a grand session. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. I think now we can end this session. I hope everybody had a very informative session. And we will send you the feedback links uh, soon, as well as the questions with the answers. Thank you, everyone, for joining this. And thank you for making this webinar a very successful one. Thank you.